Glad to be here. They asked me to come and talk to you a little bit about dreams. And uh, I think they consider that I'm an expert at that because I spend my life trying to make dreams come true. And we make dreams come true in our fantasy factory. And, uh, you know, dreams are uh, an amazing thing. You know, you all have dreams when you're growing up in grade school is what you're going to do the rest of your life. You know, you want to be a, a policeman or a nurse or a doctor or something of that nature and you can put your whole life around that that kind of defines what you want to do for the rest of your life it's important i found in my case to want to do something so badly that it really isn't work it's something that is your life's work that you enjoy so much that it becomes part of your realities part of your life and uh, so i came up with something called garner holt productions and what is a Garner Holt Productions? Well, first, I'm going to tell you a little bit about what Garner Holt Productions is before I tell you how I got there. Um, basically, I started in my parents' garage, and we build uh, now. We're the largest uh, builder of animatronics in the, in the world. We build uh, uh, animatronic figures for the largest theme parks, Disney and all that kind of thing, Universals and Chuck E. Cheese's, if any of you have seen those. Um, we built over 5,000 animatronic figures in 31 or 32 different countries. Um, we uh, are the first company to build figures for Disney that was an outside company. And uh, more, for, more than 400 figures we have built for the Disney company. So any Disney park that you see uh, worldwide, you'll see our, our products. So how did the dream start? How did it get there? Well, it was my parents' dream not to, nobody, they didn't know anything about animatronics. They were all in the horse business, horse racing business. And uh, my whole family, it was all horses, rodeo people, everything else. They wanted me to be a veterinarian. That was their dream for me. And, um, you know, that was fine until uh, the, uh, the, the fatal mistake was taking me to Disneyland. And there I am with a little hat there. I look like a ventriloquist dummy. And uh, that was my first trip to Disneyland. I think I got a little bit of the pixie dust. I got the coolest hat in town, though. Isn't that cool? Um, I think I picked up some of the pixie dust because I kept talking to my parents about this Disneyland, Disneyland thing. So finally, one day, my mom buys me at Kmart the Haunted Mansion record, okay? I was in fourth grade, and I did a class presentation, and I played the record for the class, and I'm all excited, and I acted every, all the parts out and everything, but I'd never actually been there. So I had them take me to the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, and that changed everything. I told them, I, I was so enamored at, at seeing Disneyland, I was about 11 years old, that I told them in the car on the way home, and I still remember this to this day, leaning over the back seat, I said, Mom and Dad, I'm going to build theme park rides the rest of my life. And I, I very clearly remember that moment that defined the rest of my life. So as soon as I got home, I started to build my version of a theme park ride in the backyard. So here I am with my Pirates of the Caribbean, <laughs> and I'm ready, to push, <laughs> I'm ready to push somebody down a ramp into the water. And uh, so eventually I, I put a building over this with some plywood that I had in the neighborhood, that I got in the neighborhood, and I started dressing up as a pirate, and I'd play the record and everything. And, um, and literally, uh, the boat would sink, and kids would end up in the water. And my parents decided that a lot of things that I was doing would endanger the lives of the kids in the neighborhood. Um, <coughs> so, and that's not what a theme park's all about, now is it? Um, so, uh, um, they told me not to move around a lot, but I'm having trouble doing that. They said, stay within this red carpet. And I just want to, you know how, you know, I was going to say, step outside the carpet. That's what we want. Um, that's what this show's all about, is like, just step outside the carpet. Um, so anyhow, I started... I said, well, what can I build? My dad said, well, I'll help you build a little shack, and we'll, we'll call it your haunted mansion. And so this was my first drawing. I drew this in grade school. And uh, this was my haunted house. And uh, tickets were 10 cents. I know things, prices have gone up a lot nowadays. But, um, and this was my floor plan. So, and there's a dead man and Frankenstein and a skull and things. Well, this was my haunted house. This was, this was my dream. I mean, I lived this. This is, I was 14 years old. And then I rode down my bike down to Lucky's Market, and I said, well, I need people to come to my haunted house, so I need to pass out flyers. So I copied some flyers and eventually um, took my uh, bike and rode down to the Sun-Telegram newspaper, and I told them about my haunted house, and they said, no, you can't buy an ad. And, but a reporter came out and uh, took some pictures, and to my delight, my parents' horror, they opened the paper one morning, and there was this full-page ad. <laughs> 
this, this, this thing about Garn Holt's haunted house, 400 people showed up in the backyard on Halloween. <laughs> and it's like, yes, I have my own theme park. <laughs> okay, so, and this was one of the things inside. I had the, the talking skull and I had the little organ over there. And uh, so things started to roll and I started to build monsters and things. A local mall heard about my haunted house and said, okay, we want you to do something for us. So you know what I did? I started uh, working on some, uh, I'd, I'd buy old TVs from the, the TV repair shops and I'd start working on, on tearing them apart, working on electronics and things. And eventually I said, if I'm gonna do a haunted house, I need something portable. So I bought this old trailer for $400. I, I had my parents invest in my company and I bought this, it was an old burned out construction trailer and I turned it into Garner Holt's Haunted House of Mystery. And uh, a friend that worked with my mom painted the trailer for me and look at how well preserved I am. I look almost exactly like that today. <laughs> um, it's amazing. Um, so there it is in the mall. So now I'm in business. Okay, this is Garnhold Productions. It opened, it basically was founded in 1977. I incorporated in the state of California. So that was 1977. So um, actually 76. And then um, uh, there's more haunted house pictures. The haunted house then begat another haunted house in Orange County which was for an Orange County mall, and then this is me dressed as the pirate. You know, I can't get away from the pirate thing, you know. So um, this is one of my haunted house things in the mall. Um, I had some uh, friends that were artists, and we drew up a, a flying skeleton, and he would play the organ, and he would fly across the room and jump in your face, and that's him spinning around, and then he flies at you, and that was one of my scariest moments in my house. So then, in 1976, it was a bicentennial, I wanted to build a character that would be my dream, which would be like Lincoln at Disneyland, an Uncle Sam character that would stand up and give a speech. So I got some old fence posts and a welder uh, from my uncle, and I started welding pieces of metal together and making parts, and this became, I'm pointing down here, but it's actually up there. This is, um, <laughs> this, <laughs> so this is my Uncle Sam. So actually, um, I, I developed this figure uh, in such a way that I had my cousin make the, the costume and I put this figure together and we, uh, I built a stage in the backyard out of plywood from my haunted house and uh, I put this in the mall and this stood up from a seat and gave a speech about America and um, this was kind of done with, in conjunction with my high school and uh, it was a, a great start. Um, I sent a tape to this to Disney at my friend's recommendations and the Disney people actually came out to my house and they wanted to see it and uh, got in current science and a couple of magazines and things like that. So this was in National Geographic World. And it says, quiet, please, young robot maker at work. And that was my Uncle Sam head. And uh, I started trying to continue building robots. I was still in the garage. So um, here's me sculpting some things in the garage, a parrot that I was, or a toucan I was trying to make and uh, doing some more haunt characters and things. And uh, then I started developing uh, the more serious animation. I started to um, work on plans and how I could make animation work and how I could make faces move and things like that. And uh, I continued on with the animated ki characters. Um, this animated head I took down to Walt Disney Productions and they sat around, all the people sat around and looked at it and I, I got, got a rapport going with them so I could bring things down and show them. And uh, so this was the animated head that I took. And um, these pictures were taken right in the house. This is my little office in the garage. I bought my first office chair from a neighbor and, and uh, that was my first office and I was really excited to be a professional businessman at that time. And uh, I made a bunch of uh, uh, characters for the uh, search and rescue team in San Bernardino. And so I started, had some paying business. I, I had some hands that I had from one of my characters and just as a as a gag, I uh, took one out to the beach. I had a friend who was a lifeguard, and we stuck one out of the sand. <laughs> and uh, so, um, you know, after, after I got close to having to be bailed out, uh, <laughs> the, uh, I decided this is a hit. So I started selling. This is way back when none of this stuff was available. It's all over the place now, but you couldn't get it back then. And I sold them all over the country, and I sold them all over the world. It was Garnholt's bloody hand. And uh, that kind of kept me in business. And uh, um, I apologize for the bad perm that I had there then. <laughs> but um, <clears throat> then I decided I need something to get me into business big time. So I, I invented a character called Wendell the unicycle rider. And he rides a unicycle with no visible means of support. 
and uh, I developed this character. This was a shot that I, I moved out of the garage, got into a shop. This was a, a setup shot. Uh, you see those big blue and black computers that are standing up there? Um, Disney pictures always had computers when they had animatronics, they had computers in there, it always looked real professional. Well, I bought those cabinets at a swap meet, and uh, <laughs> they weren't computers, but they looked good in the picture. The, you know, everybody seen the, <laughs> I, everybody seeing the picture, it's like, wow, he's computerized, he has, he has computers running his figures, you know? So, uh, you know, always look a little bigger than you really are, you know what I mean? Um, so that got me a job at, at MGM Grand Adventures, they built a theme park in Las Vegas, and uh, I, I tried to go through the front door. That didn't work, so I went around to all the different contractors. Finally got an a, a audience with Fred Benninger, the chairman of MGM. I had 10 minutes to show him what I could do. I showed him Wendell, told him I could build the, the effects and figures for the largest ride in the theme park. He agreed. He gave me my first theme park job. I had no employees. I had no revenue at the time. I had uh, actually uh, very uh, meager uh, 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 equipment, but uh, I was able to pull it off. We got it done, and I started working in Vegas. These are some of the uh, scenes, the characters, and the attraction. I hired all my friends and relatives to help me. We worked 24 hours a day practically getting these things to work and uh, special effects and so forth. So that took me out of the garage and got me rolling. I had my little shop over in town, and I was, I was really in business. And for the entire 80s, 1980s, I was my only employee. I just had friends coming in and out, but I could barely make it work. I could barely get the bills paid. I could barely pay the electric and everything. But uh, finally got into a bigger shop and then a bigger shop, and we started doing theme park projects all over the world. And this is what my shop looks like now. It's 60,000 square feet. We have 100 employees. And um, well, thank you. And uh, we have risen to the top of becoming the largest company in the world that does what we do. And I'm really uh, thankful and blessed to have that occur, that um, it was something that uh, really is a dream come true. And a lot of things that you see out there in the attractions now, like in the Cars ride, we did 12 of the cars that you see in that attraction. If you go to Disneyland, any of the parks that you've seen there, or, or attractions you've seen there, um, these are all... We've worked on uh, mermaids and Buzz Lightyears and um, a lot of the most complex figures that have ever been you know, built to this point today. Um, these are a lot of different examples of uh, the famous Kiss the Girl scene with the mermaid characters and uh, Ariel and Eric. And uh, we just uh, recently did the Calico Mine and uh, Log Ride out at Knott's Berry Farm and put hundreds of figures uh, back in there and uh, um, you can see we spend a lot of time, you know, in the art and the science and making them look realistic and the movement and that type of thing. This is Calico's uh, uh, mining area that, that has, you know, hundreds of figures in it. Um, I've built everything from 40-foot fire-breathing dragons to we build scenic elements and globes and, you know, fancy uh, sets and scenery and, and show scenes and ride scenes and things like that. These are a lot of Things you see in you know characters we've done for Small World. Um, some of you know Thomas the Tank Engine. We uh, we just recently did a whole bunch of those for uh, that will actually travel around as steam engines that travel around uh, to the different locations. Um, we now work for the military. Um, we build the old men that you see here are part of a training exercise. Uh, they're Afghani rebels and they're actually yelling at the people and and. Uh, they, they can be shootouts and things, and we actually uh, do training for uh, training our troops before they go overseas. And uh, our characters can throw a grenade at you, they can pull a knife at you, they can pull out a gun and shoot at you. Um, they can die, they can fall over dead after being shot, and they come back up again and they, they're ready for action again. So we do, um, we do a lot, this is actually part of a training exercise. Um, so we do a lot with the military, we do a lot with... Uh, um, mostly with theme parks, but we do a lot of things, you know, basically all over the world that anything has to be animated, over 500 Chuck E. Cheese shows. This isn't an ad about me, but it's just telling you where I've gone since then. These are, this is basically an example of, you know, the realism that we create today. And it took a long time to come around in a big circle, and there's the famous Haunted Mansion, and uh, all the things that we did for... 
before the Haunted Mansion, we turned it into the Nightmare Before Christmas show and uh, with Jack Skellington, and this is in the Haunted Mansion here. And uh, as you can see, the interesting, strange parallels of that and how that uh, came about that we were able to put the first animation that was ever built by an outside company into a classic Disney attraction, and it was the Haunted Mansion that I always dreamed about being involved in. And uh, these are some of the pictures from uh, uh, Japan, where they have the same show. So, the last show that we did uh, and was in Hong Kong, which is Mystic Manor, which this monkey, Albert, is a very animated little monkey, and it's kind of like a haunted mansion meets bed knobs and broomsticks type thing. It's a magical show that's absolutely wonderful, so when all of you go to Hong Kong, be sure and take a look at this. Um, <laughs> this is uh, a beautiful thing. We even built this organ. You know, the interesting parallel is that uh, when we were building this organ and some of these other scenes for the, the show, um, it was really interesting to me to think back of the original organ that I built and uh, how it came a big haunting circle all the way around from my first organ to the organ that we built just recently. And uh, so what an interesting thing it's been, interesting ride. You know, um, my life has been wonderful and it has been a dream come true. I'm no different than any of you. I, um, well, thank you. You know, I never, I never properly finished high school, never went on to college. I wish I could have. I didn't have time, but, uh, and I didn't have the money, but um, I would have done so. But this has been a really great ride. And, you know, I never was a good student, and I never had, you know, none of this was, you know, this wasn't accidental. I, I didn't win the lottery. Everything has been something that I've strived to do. One of the best things I can tell you, actually two words of advice to any of you starting a business, starting from scratch. First one is never give up. The next one is never give up. Okay? Those are the two best. <laughs> I've been blessed, blessed to do what I do, and uh, I thank the good Lord that he chose to have me have my dream come true. All of your dreams come true. Keep at it and make it all work. Do the right thing, be moral and ethical in your business, and never give up. I've got three seconds left. One, two, I'm it, thank you.